So, guys, here we are, MMA UK News. I'm myself, Stoomboy, as always, MMA UK BJJ show. So, uh, talking about Grapple Fest 11, then, as we've been doing the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, the 26th of February. It's going to be at the usual place, Fusion Nightclub, Fleet Street in Liverpool. Now, uh, tickets for this are all sold out, guys. So, uh, stop messaging Chris Thompson because he definitely does not have any. So, I know he's still getting messages on a daily asking for tickets. But, guys, they're all sold out. Sold out with six weeks to go. Now, some fighters might have a couple of tickets left. I very much doubt it because as these tickets were in very high demand. Now, only place you are going to be able to see the event is on Flow Grappling. Now, uh, again, I can't stress this enough. I've been saying this from the beginning. If you are going on only for this event, make sure you do choose the monthly options. Now, Flow Grappling does default to an annual subscription fee, which I believe is about 114 quid, 117 quid. Um, so it does have an option to choose a monthly option. So make sure you're choosing that monthly options. It'll only cost you about 12 or 14 pounds. And then it's obviously up to yourself whether you want to keep it or cancel it off. Uh, Flo's absolutely brilliant. It's got a lot of great stuff on there. So um, now it's going to be Daisy Fresh against Europe. So Daisy Fresh coming over with some of their top guys all the way from blue belt upwards right up to black belt and they're going to be up against some of the best guys that obviously europe and the uk has to offer so it promises to be a fantastic event now my next guest is going to be on the show that night it's going to be ben hills ben hills is going to be uh, of next generation should i say uh, he's going to be up against des parker now ben's obviously a now a grapple face veteran Obviously, I believe you're only, what, 29-year-old, and you're already a veteran, so, um, so yeah, that's an absolute pleasure to have you on, Ben. How are you doing? Thank you for having me, yeah. No, very, very good. You know, I feel feel very good at the minute, so I'm uh, bursting with confidence, so I'm, I'm, I'm all good. Definitely. Now, what about your training, then? Obviously, training, um, I mean, this is probably going to be a first, well, hopefully, it's going to be a first full year of training and competitions and stuff like that since what 2019 uh so i mean how's everything going with you training wise then yeah good i mean the, the, there was the, the, the kind of the secretive events and the secretive <laughs> lockdown and all that kind of stuff during lockdown anyway so we, we never kind of never really stopped training so you know it was one of those things that it was we kind of had to adapt and overcome about the way that we trained rather than training every day and yeah you know acquiring skill development by doing it we kind of had to learn offline and then spend the time wisely so it kind of i think it bred into me better training habits more than yeah. anything so training smarter not harder um, yeah. and i think that's something that i picked up over the over the lockdown which is if anything has just benefited my game and elevated it so uh, and you mean i couldn't be happier at the minute with with the way it's going so you know training yeah. wise I've, it, it's, it's all gravy at the minute yeah, and that's one thing, certainly, like, uh, whether it be jiu-jitsu or MMA gyms and so on, we're kind of self-policed, so you know yourself, if anybody comes in and they've got a, a cold, a chest infection or whatever, I mean, they're straight away, they're marched right back out the door again. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's, 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 it's probably one of the biggest things is people's ego in this game, so, you know, we're a close contact sport, we're not we're not boxing, we're not kickboxing, yeah. we're not keeping people at a range, we're, we're in and close and tight, so anything like skin infections or you know respiratory infections or anything like that it just spreads like wildfire through the gym so yeah. you know you you gain that resilience over the years i mean i've do, i've been doing this long enough that i've had almost everything under the sun so i kind yeah. of see the early warning signs and try and take action but it's for the new guys trying to educate them in in what to look for um yeah. but we we our guys are really good with it you know the guys and yeah. the students that i've got they're all been fantastic yeah yeah definitely and one thing, obviously, we we, we, we did a, an article on you uh, last year. So I think it was just around about the, the start of the lockdown, around about that time. And one of the things as well I, I kind of I laughed at was jiu-jitsu wasn't your first choice. You kind of, <laughs> you fell into jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was always a weird accident, if anything. But I think it was, you know, especially back in them days, it was, it was very much, you know, Paul Rimmer that kind of, taught me to love jiu-jitsu and I was yeah. around a load of guys that I realised that I was never the biggest and never the strongest but I could always be the most technical with jiu-jitsu which I kind of it just made me fall in love with it yeah. um, with Thai boxing obviously I, I, that's where I started I, I started with a bit of judo back when I was a kid but then really I went in looking to be a Thai boxer and then I kind of 
accidentally stumbled across a jiu-jitsu class and that's kind of where I, where I've stayed so you know credit to the guys there but there was no kids classes back then so you just kind of yeah. got you either survived or you didn't definitely <laughs> that was... Def- <laughs> definitely I think you were what about 13 around about 13 year old then when you first started yeah so I, I was looking back on pictures the other day because I was trying to I'm trying to certify it's, it's been it's been a nightmare obviously when you certify your belts and everything else and looking through the grade and history and all the rest of it and it was somewhere around the 2008, 2009 mark where I started. So, you know, it's been a while. Um, yeah. But back back then, it was it was cage fighting, and it was you know it was this that it wasn't really like MMA wasn't really a known sport, and especially jujitsu was. I mean, it was everyone thought jujitsu was was mad. Um, whereas yeah. obviously, it's more popular these days than ever, which is just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you then. Obviously, uh, your first kind of. Thoughts on jujitsu because I remember when I first started. Obviously, being in in between a a, a man or male's legs, female, whatever your opponent's legs, and you're sweating on each other and things like that. What was your first kind of thoughts when you were doing things like that? So, so my first my first class was an interesting one, right? So we went into this little it was a little academy in the middle of Birkenhead, which you would never suspect would be a martial arts academy, and there was yeah. a guy kicking a post because it just finished. It was literally like. Like kickboxer style, kick it, kick in the post and the roof shaking sort of thing. But he was just kicking it to practice his leg kicks, right? And he's moved yeah. over to Spain now. But it was one of those times when you walk in and go, is this really the right thing for me? I, I was actually, weirdly enough, I was late for the class. So yeah. I was I was young, I was, I was late. And, you know, I was massively late for the class. So I missed that class. And Rim was like, well, you can jump in on the next one. It's jujitsu. So come and, yeah. come and introduce yourself to the guys. So I did. Um, introduced myself to the guys. And we were doing straight foot locks. So yeah. my first ever session was straight foot locks. I didn't walk for about two weeks, but it was one of those that you just kind of learn that it's it's okay. Do you know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you you're getting you're getting smashed, you're getting smoked for like the first six months. Shush. Sorry, my dog's kicking off on the side, but <laughs> you're getting smoked for like the first six months, but you overcome that and you get your first tap, and then it just becomes so addictive. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my god, this is this is the best sport in the world. We've got to keep going with this. Definitely, definitely. And you did. I mean, obviously, what you 16 years now in the game and got your black belt last year as well. Obviously, to kind of top it off. I mean, how was the feeling then? Obviously, the black belt because obviously a lot of people when they come into the jujitsu, that's their main goal. That's one of their main goals is to get. They obviously go through the belts, but then once you got that black belt, what was what was the feeling like for yourself? Oh, I mean, it was electric, really, wasn't it? You know, you can't. It's something that you never, you never think you're ever going to achieve. But then when you do, it's quite a humbling moment. I think when you, when you achieve something of that kind of, it's always been a goal of mine, and it's always been something that's quite, it's the top of the pinnacle for me. Where that yeah. I've always wanted to get that, and I've always wanted to get to that level. I've always wanted to be graded to that level. But I think it was less about the grade and more about the. I feel like you know from. from my coach saying, I feel like you've earned this. This is this is my kind of giving back to you. And that was something that was quite special to me. Um, yeah. quite a special moment to get it with with the guys that I got it with as well. Obviously, I got it I got it amongst the kind of a plethora of our other belts now with Matthew yeah. Holmes, now in Jordan and Conrad. Um these guys that, you know, I'm part of this club essentially within Next Gen that is something that no one can can ever take away from you. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I've worked really hard to get there and I'm I'm really proud of of that achievement. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's something that, I, that I'll hold very dear for the rest of my life. Did you expect to get it or was it uh, a shock to yourself? Because I know that a lot of a lot of people, when I speak to them, some people are like, yeah, do you know what? I, I kind of thought it was coming, uh, whereas others were like, do you know, I didn't even know. It was just an absolute surprise. No, we, we knew about it, but it was, um, I think it was very much a case of, I never really expect anything, if that makes sense. Like, I, I wouldn't ever go out and be like, I'm a black belt. Why am I a black belt? What's going on? Like, yeah. it's less about, it's more about skill development and more about me proving that I am a black belt rather than just being like, here's your black belt. You're now a black belt. Yeah. Um, but, you know, within all the gyms that I've trained at and with all the gyms that I train at, especially at the minute, you, you're only graded if you are the belt. So, yeah. you know, you're thrown at the deep end and now I'm a kind of, I'm a very small fish in a very big pond of, a, of, of the black belt <laughs> level where... I felt like at my colour belts, I was probably more in the mix um, and more certainly certainly in the competitive environment. I felt like I could certainly compete at a much, much higher level, whereas I feel like I need to now grow into this belt and this is my opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, but, it's, you know, it's a huge, huge achievement and a huge kind of honour for me to, to take it. 
Definitely, definitely. And, and again, another big congratulations as well. You got, I believe you got engaged. <laughs> yeah, I did. I so, did indeed, yeah. New, it was New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve, I believe? No, so so New, New Year's Eve when we're actually getting married, but we were, right. it was around summertime. Um, it was around right. May, I think it was. I, I, she's going to kill me for saying that, but, you know, she's... <laughs> She's she's phenomenal. She's absolutely absolutely phenomenal girl. You know she's she's a, she's beautiful, intelligent. She does jujitsu as well. So you know it's, a, it's the all round package that you can't yep. you can't yep. take away. But she she's dangerous. She's very very dangerous. You know. She's only been doing, let, sorry, let me just open this door. She's kicking. Me. One second. Come on. Right now we can have peace and quiet. So yeah, so she's you know she's been she's been the rock for a while, and she she kind of inspires me to train and. Yeah, you know she she really is fantastic. She's on this um she's on a bit of a cooking hype at the minute where she's making um she's bought these new new skinny books where like called Pinch of Non where low cal recipes. Yeah. So I'm I'm absolutely lapping that up where she's making. I'm coming home and I'm getting these amazing meals put in front of me. Where I'm just like this is great. I've to trade it. Um, but no, she she keeps me going, keeps me keeps me motivated, and you know I can't, I can't knock her for for any of her faults. She's absolutely fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, awesome. congrats on that as well. Thank Definitely you. a big year, big year for you last year. So, black belt and then obviously engaged as well. So, um, massive year. Um, <laughs> and then Grapple Fest then. So, obviously, you've been on before. We've yeah. obviously seen you. We know what you're all about. How did you find out this time? So, obviously, you, because you were on the last one. You were on the last one. So, yeah. um, so this one's a quick turnaround back on Grapple mm-hmm. Fest 11. Yeah, yeah. So I've been on. I think I think I've been on every Grapple Fest but one. Yeah. Um. I think it was only the first one that I wasn't on, only because I wasn't back then. So I took a bit of a break in my training. Um. When yeah. I went to uni, and I've, I've told this story a thousand times, but yeah. But essentially, when I took that break, that's when Grapple Fest one went on. Um. Yeah. And then I fought Kev Owen on on my. I, it was like I was back for a couple of months, and then I, I went and stepped in and fought Kev. Yeah. Um. And then since then, I've just just competed since I haven't really ever stopped competing and I, I love it. So it's something that was really, you know, it's a show that really grabbed kind of captured my heart. It's a, it's in yeah. my hometown. It's in front of a home crowd. It's a, an amazing venue, super intense, super intimate. It's, it's a great place to compete. Yeah. Um, you know, I've competed in a lot of different venues and that's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Tom, Tom has always been good to me, so I, I can certainly never knock it, but yeah, in terms of when I found out about the match, so, I find out about these matches the same way every single time. So the match never really comes to me. It goes usually goes straight to Rimmer. Yeah. Um, and Rimmer just messaged me saying, this is the name, yes or no. I'm like, well, yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, it's just another name on a, on a piece of paper to me, really. Yes. It's, yeah. You know, I know, I know, I know some of them. I don't know some of them. That's just the way it is. But now I've started to learn that as I'm competing at this sort of, slightly elevated level i tend to know more people than i don't so, yeah yeah obviously shane, shane fishman was the one last time which I, i've been wanting that match for a while and knew shane was a phenomenal athlete so yeah he's someone i wanted to test myself against as one of the best in the world so yeah it's it's I, i'm enjoying it at the minute definitely what about days you know much about days obviously your opponent yeah yeah i do and I, I know bits and bobs about this Des has been around for a while so yeah. you know he's a he's a veteran of the scene he's an mma obviously the mma veteran he's fought a lot of my friends Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know who he is, and I sort of—I I mean, I don't want to say I know his game because I don't. I, I, you know, you never know anyone's game at, at this point. People think they know my game, but they have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Um, like when you roll with someone in the gym, it's very different to on that comp stage as well. So anyone can be caught, anyone at this at this level. But yeah. I know he's good. I know he's very strong. I know he's very athletic. Um, I know he's a tough kid. So it should be an exciting match. You know, I, I'm never—I'm never going to back down from it. I'm not. You know, it doesn't make a difference to me. Yeah. one way or another I, yeah. I sort of know what to look out for and he probably knows what to look out for with me as well so it's going to be an interesting <laughs> one definitely listen we never see you in a boring fight at all at yeah. Grapple Fest so obviously you always come to bring it which is absolutely brilliant to see that's uh-huh. why obviously you're on it so often because uh-huh. I'd say if you weren't if you weren't exciting you know what Chris wouldn't have anybody back on if the crowd didn't like you so the crowd obviously love you so um, so again promise to be another fantastic matchup for you so um, and then 2022 then, so this is a full year back. What do we see from you then? So first full year, hopefully, of competing going forward. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I spent, you know, I did, I think I did something, something ridiculous, like 16 or 17 super fights you know, the year before COVID hit. And yeah. like, I, I just compete everywhere and anywhere, anywhere I can, you know, do whatever I can. But my kind of goal is to, I'm going to continue with the super fight scene, but really kind of, 
kind of immerse myself in that tournament scene as well. Yeah. I feel like I've missed out the last couple of years on ADCC. I've missed out on, you know, IBJJF stuff. I've missed out on those European and pan titles that I yeah. feel like I want. And I want that recognition in the world scene of I want to go out there and make a bit of a statement. And just yeah. for people to not, I don't care if people know who I am. I'm not bothered about that. I'm not bothered about, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful to have some great sponsors, but you know, that's not the be all and end all to me. The be all and end all to me is feeling like I've achieved something yeah. that nobody else can. Um, yeah. So I want to go out there and do that. That's, that's my goal for this year is to be more active, but be more active on the tournament scene as well. Um, yeah. Which is probably a bit, probably, it's, yeah, we're talking about sub super fight. So this is the complete opposite end of the spectrum, but you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, if, if ever a grapple fest match comes up, I will always be the first to put my name in the hat. Yeah. Um, I'll never turn down a match ever. So, yeah. I see. That's the unfortunate thing over the last couple of years. We feel like we've been robbed of two years of a progression. I know that obviously some people still manage to, to get training, but certainly competitions and stuff like that, which a lot of jujitsu guys, um, kind of measure themselves on competition. So, yeah. obviously, you can look back and say, well, look, I was a European champion, a British champion, a world champion, but the last two years, we haven't had it. So, yeah. obviously, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uncle Boris, if you're watching, <laughs> keep us going, man. Keep us we, going. We know you are, Boris. We know you are. We, we definitely know you are. We definitely know you are. You're having a drink at a party somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you're definitely watching. Um, and then, final thing for you then, Ben. So, obviously, you've been in the game for a number of years now. Obviously, I'm sure you've trained with hundreds, if not thousands of people over the last kind of so many years. Uh, so anybody you want to shout out to? So any kind of friends, family members, teammates or sponsors as well? God, where do I even begin? I think, you know, in terms of, to, to keep it fairly succinct, I think in terms of my sponsors, you know, they've all supported me really, really well. I've, you know, CBD Life is one of my newest ones who've, They've been great keeping me together and, you know, I'm very grateful to to, to use their products. You know, yeah. Harmon Coaching is one of the best ones. Jack Harmon is, honestly, since I, so I brought him on board the last few months, his nutrition and strength advice has been ridiculous. I've never yeah. felt better. Um, he's the best strength and, you know, strength and conditioning coach I've ever worked with. You know, the programs he's got me on, I'm looking at some of the programs like, I don't even know what that exercise is. But then I go and do it. I'm like, oh, of course it makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, he checks in with me twice a week. He's got nutrition about it. It's, it's just, I literally cannot fault him. So Jack Harmon is the, the cream of the crop when it comes to strength and conditioning. So if you're ever looking for one, get get on him. Um, yeah, in like terms it. of kind of performance management, I've got a physio, uh, strength, well, sports therapist, I should call him, not a physio. That's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit demeaning for him, I think. But a man called Simon Squires, he's just, he's a genius. He's amazing at what he does and, you know, really, really good friend. Yeah. And then MVR, obviously, MVR have supported me since Purple Belt days. You know, they supported me. They sponsored me on my first, after my first Grapple Fest match. So, yeah. you know, that was Grapple Fest two. So yeah. they've been around a while, and they've been great to me. You know, they've always been, always supported me, always been there. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, lots of new kit dropping soon, which I'm hearing about. So it sounds really good. Um, nice. In terms of you know guys to shout out, I, I, you know, I've, I could list off a thousand different people, but obviously, my missus is the kind of the main one, but. Yeah. In terms of training partners, you know, I'm, I'm training now. Stealth BJJ is one of the guys that I'm spending a bit of time with as well because I'm over in Huddersfield. So, you know, balancing my training between Next Generation where, you know, my, my heart has always lay and I've, I've spent my entire career and Stealth has, has been brilliant. Kama ASW has been fantastic to me as well. But, you know, Steve Campbell at Stealth has been just been amazing for me. He's been so welcoming and so kind. And Mark yeah. Berman is my main training partner there really. And he's, just he's a Marcelo Black Belt, phenomenal at what he does, just gives me the business every time I go in. So you can't you can't knock that really. Um, and yeah. Matthew Holmes is, you know, obviously he's a fellow guy on the on the Grapple Fest card. I'm sure you'll probably be speaking to him at some point as well. Some got, point this week, yeah. He's got a great opponent. Um phenomenal grapple though, and he's been there since day one for me as well. He's travelled up and down the country with me in the, behind the scenes and you know, he's been the guy that's been pushing me as well. So, you know, I've got a lot of time and respect, but you know. Anyone that I do miss out in these kind of speeches, I feel like I'm doing them a disservice. But I've trained with so many guys that they're the kind of the main ones that I want to push out. But there's so yeah. many people that I want to say thanks to and whatever. But that's yeah, that's bro. kind of the succinct, <laughs> succinct <laughs> people a bit. Well, well, listen, if you've not mentioned any names, I mean, these guys, these people know who they are. They definitely yeah. know yeah, who yeah. they are. Yeah, And, oh. you know, like Paul, Paul Rim is one of the ones that never gets enough attention ever. Yeah. Never has done in the MMA scene. He's a legend, but in the jiu-jitsu scene, he's never got that much attention. You know, 
I've worked with some phenomenal coaches, you know, him, Kamakataru, you've got um, uh, Steve Campbell, like these guys that have helped me over the years. Yeah. And he's he, he got me interested in jiu-jitsu and he's been there, always been there, you know, so he's he's a phenomenal coach and, you know, he's got guys like Paddy Pimlet now, so, you know, he's, yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's kind of still gives me the time of day, even though I'm only a low, I'm a, I'm a lowly, lowly grappler <laughs> and he's got super celebrities in the gym like Paddy now. Yeah, definitely. Now, listen, Paul's absolutely awesome. As I said, uh, uh, Paul, I mean, obviously, us Jiu Jitsu guys know Paul Rimmer. Um, as I said, we know exactly what Paul brings. And obviously, the, the, some of the guys are kicking about next generation. I mean, we everybody knows who they are. So, um, so yeah, Paul Rimmer's definitely an awesome guy. So, um, and wealth of knowledge, wealth of knowledge over over the last X amount of years. So, so definitely big up Paul Rimmer. Um, yeah. So, guys, there we have it. Then Grapple Fest Eleven uh, going to be Saturday, twenty sixth of February. So that's going to be Fusion Nightclub, Fleet Street in Liverpool. Awesome venue. Uh, it's an absolutely brilliant venue. I said Ben's been there all, every time, bar one. Um, so definitely a great venue. Definitely a fan favourite venue as well because the fans are right on top of the action. Now, tickets are all sold out, so get on Flow Grappling. Make sure you choose their monthly options. Otherwise, it will default to that full year subscription. So uh, don't get stung for 100 odd quid if you're only going to be choosing this for Grapple Fest. So obviously my guest, Ben Hills, Next Generation, is going to be up against Des Parker. Um, again, Ben's a, an awesome, very, very exciting as I said, if he wasn't exciting, he wouldn't have been on it as many times as he has. So, uh, so we're looking forward to seeing you again, Ben. But listen, thank you very much for your time, Ben. Thank you for having me, mate. No, I appreciate the kind words as well. It's it's, uh, it's very great to be. Thank you. Definitely. Listen, I'll see you next month. I'll be there. Uh, so we'll get a chat and so on, buddy. Yeah. All right? Absolutely, mate. Fantastic. Yeah. You thank later. you again, mate. Take Thanks, care. Guys. Speak to you later. Bye.